fractions. A fraction is a part of a whole. The number written here, 1 over a line and then the 4 under the line is an example of a fraction. What does this mean? It means that a particular whole is divided into four equal parts and the parts that we are considering, the parts that we are interested in is 1. The number above this line is called the numerator and the number below the line is called the denominator. Repeating for emphasis, the denominator is how many parts the whole is divided into and the numerator is how many parts we are interested in. In this circle drawn here, we see that this circle is divided into four equal parts and for consideration is the part of the circle that's colored in orange. We see that the circle is divided into four equal parts, so we have four as the denominator and the amount of parts we're interested in is the one part which is the part that is colored in orange, so it's 1. The fraction of the circle that's colored in orange is 1 over 4. We could also consider the part that's colored in green. Again, the circle is divided into 4 equal parts, so we draw a line. We have 4 below to represent how many parts the circle is divided into, and we have 3 parts of that 4 is colored in green. So 3 over 4 represents the green part, and 1 over 4 represents the orange. I'd like to illustrate now in this example the fraction of parts that colored in orange. If you look, we see that this circle is divided into four equal parts and all four parts are colored in orange. The fraction represented, we have four as the denominator and four as the numerator because all four parts are colored in orange. So four over four is a fraction and we realize that we have the whole circle still there. So we are saying, what we are seeing here illustrated is that four over four is the same as one whole circle. So we just consider the leftmost circle in the first instance. We see that the circle is not divided into any. It's the same as saying it is divided into one or it's just one part. That means the denominator is one in this instance. And then how many of the one parts do we have? We have one of the one part. So we're saying, we see here that one over one is a fraction that can be used to represent one. The whole number one is the same as the fraction one over one. Similarly, this is a whole circle, so this is 1 as well, but this circle now is divided into two equal parts. How many of the equal parts do we have? We have all two of the equal parts, so 2 over 2 is the same as 1. And in the rightmost circle, it's divided into 3, and we have all three parts, so it's 3 over 3. So we see that 1 can be represented as 1 over 1, or 2 over 2, or 3 over 3, or 5 over 5, it follows, or 10 over 10, or 100 over 100. So I'm saying that 1 can be represented as any number over itself. Let's consider 3. We have 3 circles. We can say that each circle is not divided into any parts. So it's the same as saying each circle has only one part. Each circle has only one part and how many of these one parts we have? We have 3 of them. So a fraction to represent these 3 is 3 over 1. Following on to clearly illustrate it, if each of these circles was divided into 4 parts, then the denominator would be 4, and then if you have 4 in the first one, 4 in the second one, and 4 in the third one, there would be 12 parts if each circle was divided into 4. So we're saying that 12 over 4 is the same as 3. The whole number 3 can be represented as a fraction, 3 over 1, and can also be represented as a fraction, 12 over 4. It follows that any whole number can be represented as a fraction by putting that whole number over 1. What I'm saying is that 7 is the same as 7 over 1. 10 is the same as 10 over 1. Any whole number represented as a fraction is that number over 1. If you just concern the four circles on top, we see that we have three circles that's fully shaded. That's why you have the three represented here. And then this fourth circle is divided into four equal parts. And of those four equal parts, we have three shaded. So we have 3 over 4. That's a fraction to represent this fourth circle. What this diagram is actually showing us is 3 and 3 over 4. Alternatively, we look at the rectangles at the bottom. We have three rectangles. We're considering parts of the rectangle that's colored blue. We have two whole rectangles colored blue. So we have a two represented here. And then in the third rectangle, we, it's divided into three equal parts. And the, only one of those parts is colored. So it's 1 over 3. So this is the same as saying 2 and 1 third. Alternatively, if you're looking at each rectangle, you realize that each of the rectangles is divided into 3. And how many of those pieces do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five six seven so we see that it's just as correct to say two and one third or to say seven over three two and one over three is the same as seven over three